John Danaher is a name that strikes fear into the hearts of even the toughest opponents. When you go to judge confidence, don't look at the face. Look at the extremities of the body. That's where the truth comes out. Knowing that an athlete is coached by John, he has to be feared and respected. John is a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, coached to some of the greatest fighters in MMA and BJJ history, including George St. Pierre and Gordon Ryan. From humble beginnings to world-renowned teaching abilities, John Danaher is a true jiu-jitsu master. Have you ever wondered what would happen if one of the greatest minds in Brazilian jiu-jitsu stepped onto the mats as a competitor? Imagine if John Danaher could actually fight. Would anyone be able to stop him? The great and unique human gift is this idea to come up and arrive at heuristic rules and principles which turn out to be very effective guides to behavior. When compared to other successful black belts, Danaher started grappling relatively late in life at the age of 28. He began his martial arts journey while studying at Columbia University in New York City. Danaher was awarded a full scholarship to pursue his doctoral degree in philosophy. At Columbia University, a colleague of Danaher suggested he takes a class in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu citing the success of BJJ fighters in the early days of UFC against tough opponents. Interestingly, Danaher joined the class, which was led initially by Craig Kukok. Um, my first instructor was uh, Henzo Gracie, and he was, in fact, my only instructor. Who had been assistant to Henzo Gracie. Eventually, Henzo Gracie took over the classes. Henzo had a brilliant and dynamic game. He used to move beautifully. John Danaher was never a fan of grappling at first, he thought it was a homoerotic sport and believed that in a real fight, the best way to win would be to just punch the other guy in the head. However, as he learned more about the sport, he eventually realized that there was far more to it than he originally thought. When Henzo Gracie lost its two top instructors, Danaher, who was a purple belt at the time, was asked to fill in and coach. He wasn't a competitive grappler, but he threw himself into mastering the art of coaching jiu-jitsu. Surprisingly, he ended up falling in love with the sport. When Danaher started teaching, he was unsure if he could effectively impart the knowledge he had acquired. He also began to worry about his prospects going forward and whether or not coaching Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu would be a better option than pursuing an academic career in philosophy. Despite the doubts, Danaher persisted with teaching and has become a leading authority in the field. His mastery of martial arts and philosophy has made him an invaluable asset to his students and his impact on the world of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is unparalleled. In 2002, John Danaher met a young Canadian fighter, George St. Pierre, who had come to train and take part in the introductory classes. Uh, he wanted to get stronger in, in uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, he came just to check out Henzo Gracie. We had a good reputation. We had champions that used to teach there and, and uh, uh, he came and he liked the classes that we taught there and um, uh, George is, a, yeah, he's a remarkable character but one of the things, he's, he's unstintingly loyal and if he likes someone, he, he stays with them. After watching a VHS of St. Pierre's talent, Danaher was confident that the young fighter had the potential to be a successful figure in the world of MMA due to his well-rounded fighting style. This bond of teacher-student relationship between Danaher and St. Pierre developed over time, eventually resulting in St. Pierre becoming one of the greatest MMA fighters of all time. Under the guidance of John Danaher and Faraz Zahabi, head coach at TriStar Gym in Montreal, GSP was able to dominate the UFC, earning him the title of greatest of all time amongst fans. In the early 2000s, Matt Serra gathered some higher belt jiu-jitsu practitioners and had invited Dean Lister to join them. During the sessions, Dean and Danaher got into a debate that prompted Lister to ask, I was having some success versus black belts at that academy with leg locks. Why would you ignore 50% of the human body? Now, the leg lock game is a very subtle game. Yeah. This thought-provoking question had a lasting impression on Danaher and altered his perspective on jiu-jitsu, particularly about the leg lock game. Prior to this conversation, leg locks were not valued or acknowledged much. The focus was solely on teaching controls, chokes, and submissions on the upper body, with no attention given to lower body techniques. What is DDS? John Danaher is a recognizable figure in the modern-day Brazilian jiu-jitsu world, 
His fourth degree black belt status under Henzo Gracie has enabled him to lead and mastermind the highly successful Danaher Death Squad. The DDS is renowned for its exquisite leg locking techniques, such as the heel hook. The key to their success is controlling the opponent's leg with a move called the 411, inside Sinkaku, Honey Hole, or Saddle. This immobilizes one of their legs and exposes the heel. Once you apply pressure with a certain grip on the heel, it forces the opponent to tap out. It is one of the most devastating techniques in BJJ. In the beginning, DDS was founded by Eddie Cummings, who was only 26 and had a university academic background like Danaher himself. He is credited as one of the innovators behind leg locks for the team. Gary Tonin was another key figure who popularized leg locks after dominating EDIs with them. Finally, Gordon Ryan gained recognition initially for his leg locking abilities, but is now known as a fierce competitor in all aspects of grappling and one of the best no-gi grapplers. Together, this trio has made an indelible mark on modern grappling. The Danaher Death Squad has grown to become an even more formidable force in the world of grappling, thanks to the addition of several young prodigies, including Nicky Ryan, Gordon's brother, referred to as Young Master by Danaher, as well as Canadian BJJ stars Ethan Krillinston and Oliver Taza, whom I had the privilege of personally training with at the TriStar Gym in Montreal. Their BJJ level is very impressive. This team was further strengthened with the addition of Nicky Rodriguez, also known as the Black Belt Slayer, who won an ADCC silver medal as a blue belt, and Craig Jones, a well-known grappler before joining DDS and one of the top competitors from Australia. Together, these members have made the DDS an unstoppable force in grappling. If you're still here, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for a chance to be featured in our monthly shout-out giveaway. Just comment I subbed and you'll be entered. Let's keep going. In July 2021, Danaher Death Squad disbanded not long afterward. In particular, there was a, uh, a family tension between two brothers, which magnified over time. Um, uh, it had an element of tragedy insofar as not only was it a team breakup, it was also a family breakup, which is much more serious. It was revealed that he had relocated to Austin, Texas with two of his elite students, Gary Tonin and Gordon Ryan to open the gym, New Wave Jiu-Jitsu. This new venture has attracted renowned individuals such as multiple-time IBJJF world champion Nicholas Marigali and teenage BJJ star Helena Krivar. Despite the disbanding of Danaher Death Squad, his new endeavor has proven to be a success. John Danaher's New Wave Jiu-Jitsu was recognized as Gym of the Year at the JITS Magazine 2022 BJJ Awards due to the success of their competition team throughout the year. This achievement is a testament to John and his gym's dedication and hard work. Following the separation of the renowned DDS, two teams were formed, B-Team and New Wave Jiu-Jitsu. Both teams initially respected each other, but after Gordon Ryan and Nicky Rod's fight, they began to disparage each other on social media. Danaher, however, remains impartial and uninvolved in this conflict. He is a great leader possessing the respect of all, and his cool-headedness serves as an example for both sides. If John Danaher ever did decide to compete, it would be a fascinating spectacle. He has an incredible knowledge of the art of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and his ability to analyze and strategize would be unparalleled. He is also a master of the mental game, with an ability to remain calm and adjust his tactics on the fly. The only thing he is missing, a young athlete's body. John Danaher's influence in the Brazilian jiu-jitsu world is undeniable, from coaching some of the sport's top athletes to launching his own academy and gyms. With his passion for teaching and dedication to help others reach their potential, Danaher has become a major figure in the martial art community and continues to make an impact on it. Every single day I get some guy walk into the gym and say, Mr. Danaher, I'm gonna be your next champion student. If you found this video interesting, please like, subscribe, and comment below. Thanks for watching.